Day one was jam-packed since we had to make the drive including hitchhiking to the trailhead and also the crew and I hiking about 10 miles to Paliku Cabin. On our second day, we needed to hike to our next cabin, Holua, which was about 6.3 miles with a 560 feet gain. I woke up around 6.15ish to capture the sunrise and mainly because I needed to use the outhouse. Here's our day two adventure. You could actually hear the bird song. Ooh, I just saw one. Different, different kinds of birds for sure. But here's the outhouse. I had a great sleep. I want to say I had seven hours of sleep. Pretty good compared to the night before. We actually had the cabin to ourselves, so we had a group of six. So it was pretty good. We were very comfortable and just being able to do whatever we want in the cabin. Just eat, make fire, talk story, sleep. So it was a great night. But today, we are now, well, we're gonna leave late because it's only a six mile hike. We're probably gonna leave around 10 ish and then hit to Holua Cabin, which is gonna be our last night here in Haleakala. So, yeah, again, this trip is going great. The toilet's actually really clean, so, and there was ample amount of toilet paper. It's a little damp, but hey, that's better than just pooping in the woods. Got Hawaiian sweet bread rolls. And I'm just gonna make a sandwich with eggs and lap chong and sauce salami. Yeah. And then got lap chong salami. Just do that. Shorts. After the yummy breakfast, we cleaned up and refilled our water bottles. One of the perks when staying in the cabin was that there was already a sink that provided us water. We made sure to filter it since it was non-potable. Okay, so we're leaving Paliku now and we have 1.1 miles to the first junction but we're gonna slowly make our way to Holua Cabin. It's pretty soft in right now. It's supposed to be sunny so hopefully the clouds burn up. This is the pu'u that we gotta go around and once we get around, we're gonna hit the junction. Check this out. Better. Yeah, this is sweet. Sweet. That part is sweet. Yeah, I think it's the skin that's... Sour. 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 We're in the meadow that Mary Lou danced in. It was on the um, one of the newer trails. So I think this is Honoka'u Pu'u or the cinder cone. And then behind us, the one that we we're going around is Mo'ili Pu'u. So pretty glad that we could see more cinder cones around us. 
Back at this junction, 4.9 miles left. The clouds up here move so fast, making it surreal. On this side, the Halemau Trail has a lot of trail signs. Yeah, today you can really feel the elevation gain just with the altitude. It does, I have to kind of like take break, can't even talk. I have to take breaks and catching my breath and just remembering to kind of go slow. But yesterday, some of us felt the altitude from the switchbacks going down because it was like at least a thousand feet drop. Yeah, different environment. But so far, all our spirits are good. I think this is the cinder cone that um, in front of Kapalailoa cabin, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Living on a <laughs> the landscape changed from lush green to walking on Mars. All there was was black sand and scattered lava rocks. Since it was after 12 p.m., we took a nice lunch break. 2.7 to Holua. I want to say this is probably my favorite section so far just because we look like we're in Mars and then you can see the sun shining or I don't know if that's the natural color but I'm pretty sure that's Pella's paint pot. Oh, looking back, you can see the clay colors. desert or in the sand dunes but it's just dark colored so going to the cabin which is 1.9 miles left you have to trudge through the black sand We made sure to go through the Silver Sword Loop since it didn't make the distance longer. It was cool to see many of this endangered native plant in the area. While making our way back to Halemau Trail, we couldn't help but notice the huge green mountain in the backdrop. We knew that the cabin was near, so our excitement gave us a little kick. At the same time, we'd also be in awe because of how big the mountain was in front of us. See the cabin, right? There, what a beautiful backdrop. Oh my gosh. The group was happy that we made it to our end point for the day. Holua cabin felt a bit bigger and it had the same amenities like Paliku. Since we got to the cabin early, we were selfishly hoping that no other groups would stay in the cabin since there was only six of us. We lucked out big time because we actually did have the cabin to ourselves. It is 4 o'clock, we have a lot of daylight. Darian and Mary Lou went to check out the cave. How was it? Was it good? It looks like the hole has been filled up with rocks. Either that or I'm in the wrong hole. 
There was a cool looking cave behind the cabin, so we went to check that out. She said? I thought he said he doesn't like big holes. <laughs> he likes all kind of holes. <laughs> the cave was actually shallow, but it made a cool photo op with the cabin in the foreground and looking how far we came from. While we were heading back, a rainbow formed and we didn't want to miss this other photo op. Alright, heading to the outhouse. The one at Paliku, it was kind of a long walk and last night it was rainy but this one right here's the cabin and boom here it is so it was close to dinner time so we started boiling water eric and i had beef stew and it was yummy the gang and i enjoyed each other's company as we talked story throughout the night i was very happy to be with my hiking family here in haleakala I knocked out around 8 p.m. and was awakened by Daniel and Darren opening the cabin door because they were seeing the stars. So all of us woke up around 12.30 and stargazed for about two hours. It was such a spectacle, at times the sky would be so clear with the bright stars trailing behind the silhouetted mountains. What a beautiful night, and that was our day 2 here in Haleakala. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and I hope you stick around next week for my day 3 video which will cover our last day here. Aloha!